Just thinking about this next turning has me seeing stars. I've got two pieces of wallet here. These are going to be part of my next job. They're almost 13 sixteenths this way and they're 9 sixteenths this way. I'm going to cut them into much smaller pieces. I have quite a few I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut way more than I need and I'll just uh, set them aside and I can do something similar to this again. So let's go ahead and cut them. All right, here's the little walnut pieces I cut, and they're just little parallelograms is what they are. Here's some maple pieces I cut. They have a 30 degree angle and the end is square. So I think this is the best way for me to glue these pieces together. And I'll show you on one of them how I'm going to do it. And there we go. That should be a good one. Okay, we'll be back for the next operation. So what I do now is I'll just touch these pieces off on my disc sander so that I can glue them together. Then all I need to do is get some glue on the uh, joint. Get them together and line them up. Alright, I have my saw blade tilted at 22 and a half degrees and I'm going to cut an angle on each side of these so I have eight segments. Time to glue these segments into a ring. Okay, <laughs> hold still there. All right, there we go. These joints came straight off the table saw. 
it's not every time that when I set an angle on the saw that I don't have to make an adjustment on one of them, but this time they fit perfect. And I have to, got to give thanks to this little digital angle finder. So this is going to be the base, and it's uh, Peruvian walnut. The next thing I glue on is going to be this ring. It's also the Peruvian walnut. Then the main portion of the bowl will go on, and this will be the top ring. It's also Peruvian walnut. I'm going to turn this round first, and make sure it's flat, and we'll glue the first ring on. Okay, that'll be good. All set to glue the first ring on the base. I have the ring in my small set of coal jaws that will center it. I have it marked to divide the segments evenly. I'm going to go ahead and get glue on it. All right, let's just leave that clamp for a while and uh, come back and get this turned around. All right, I put a line on here. And I want to cut this out of here, put a rounded shape to the bottom before I glue the big section in there. It'll be much easier to get this done now. Okay, here goes the big section. So I already put a pencil line on here to line that up. Well, I think it should be fine to turn. It sat all night. So let's go ahead and turn this around. So I finished putting a little slope on this and, and I tilted it this way just a little bit because I think it's going to go with the shape I'm going to do here and then up on the rim. Okay, I'm ready to do the inside. I've moved my steady rest into place and I put a line on here. This said give me a good idea where my wall is going to be. And because I have all these flats, I'm going to start out with a carbide hollowing tool and just slowly get that off and blend it into the bottom and see what it looks like. I'm not going to go real fast, about 600 RPMs.
All right, let's use a negative rig scraper on it. I'll try not to block the view. Well, that's pretty good. I think we can go ahead and sand this. Okay, here's the last ring. It is extra big. I may use it that way. I may make it smaller. All right, the only thing that's left is to create a shape out of this piece for the top rim. I'll make it round first and then decide if I want that original shape I was going to use or not. Alright, two more areas of the finish. A little transition here, and then put a little kind of an OG shape in right there. Do this one first. Okay, all ready to sand. I'm going to start with 80 grit and I'll work my way up to probably 500. I have that in sheets and I will be sanding this with sheets of paper. It's just easier to get in here and maintain the shape. And I'll start my dust collector and get going on it. I'll just show you a little bit of this sanding here and come back when it's ready to put some finish on that. I know it doesn't look like it, but I am sanding with the lathe running in reverse. Time to put finish on. Thought about it for a long time. I'm going to use wipe on poly. I like using lacquer, it's just harder to spray the inside. And the wipe on poly works quite well. And the way I like to put it on, is to run this in reverse and then just put it on like this. Not putting very much on. It'll dry pretty fast. That's the first coat. So I have six coats of the wipe on poly on here. I just got through going over it with wet and dry sandpaper uh, 500 grit. I'm going to put one last thin coat on it. The inside's done and the bottom doesn't have a tenon on it so when this is dry then we're done. So I'll see you when it's all finished. Well, here it is. It must be destiny because all the stars are aligned. The feature ring has eight segments. Each one of these sections are made out of 14 pieces of wood. There's six American walnut that make the star, and then there's this maple. 
The two bottom rings are Peruvian walnut and they each have eight segments per row. And the top ring is also Peruvian walnut with eight segments per row. Finished six and seven eighths in diameter. It's five and three eighths inches tall. And the base is five inches. I finished it using wipe on poly. I put it on real thin with the lathe running slow in reverse. And it was a small build up, but I got about seven coats on and it really didn't take all that long. And I'm real happy with how it finished out. These types of turnings, they're a little time consuming. All the cutting, all the gluing, all the weighting, but I enjoy doing it. I'm happy with how it turned out. If I did it again, I would make a fixture to glue all 14 of these pieces together. I think it would be much easier, a lot of fun to make, and I certainly do enjoy making things like this. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And a special thanks to all my subscribers. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to my channel and you feel so inclined, please consider subscribing. Thanks again, and until the next time, I'll see you later.